So it's encouraging to see everybody here. Even though we might be few in number, praise God we're here. Because the Bible says where there's two or three gathered in his name, in God's name, in Jesus' name, there the Holy Spirit, there the Lord Jesus is present. And we know God is present because his manifestation is here. And he was speaking to us even at the wee early hours when we came to prayer. God was speaking. He was revealing. He was showing. He was warning. So I thank God for that. You know, I thank God that he's always speaking. Always speaking. He's always calling us. He's always in communication with us. Whether you know it or not, whether you like it or not, God is always at the other side of the phone calling us. Aren't you glad that God's always calling us? He's always trying to reach out to us. Most of us, we have a phone and if somebody calls that we don't like, what do we do? Voicemail. Oh, I don't, I don't want to talk to that guy. We're going to put him on voicemail. Or if we have an unknown caller, I don't know who's calling me. Voicemail. 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 Aren't you guys happy that God is never, ever putting us on voicemail? He's never ignoring our calls. He's always there willing and waiting to pick up that phone and talk to us, reveal himself to us. Hallelujah. And that is the case here in the story of today. And it can be found in Scripture in 1 Samuel chapter 3. So if you have your Bibles, turn to 1 Samuel chapter 3. And I want to focus on verses 1 through 10. This is a well-known story. We all know this story. It's a familiar story. But it's a story that we can all take for ourselves, including myself. And it says this. The boy Samuel ministered before the, the Lord Eli, under Eli. And it's interesting because the Bible says that in those days, the word of the Lord was rare and there were not many visions. And one night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was laying down in the house of the Lord where the ark of God was, something very significant to pay attention to, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, here I am, and ran to Eli and said, here I am, you called me. But Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. Again, the Lord called Samuel, and Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, here I am, you called me. My son, Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lay down. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. A third time the Lord called Samuel, and Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. Then Eli realized. He realized that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, go and lay down. And if he calls you, say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. So Samuel went, went down in his place. The Lord came and stood there, calling as the other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, speak, for your servant is listening. Now, by reading these familiar verses and these words, we are all called by God for two things, salvation and also service. That's what God calls us for. But we have to learn, including myself, I'm still learning this myself, and I'm 35 years old, I'm still learning this. We have to learn to hear the voice of God when he's calling us. We have to learn to distinguish and discern the right voice. Who's calling us? Our story today is about Samuel, who heard and obeyed the word of God. And the word of God in this story is in the form of a calling. The Lord was calling Samuel for a great task and a great mission. It was in the form of a calling. Over and over we hear that the Lord called Samuel. 
Reading scriptures, anytime you hear a word or calling from God in the Bible, you know that you're on the cusp of something new and exciting. Something big is about to happen. When God calls you, something huge is about to happen. God was calling Samuel, and something big was about to happen. God's not going to call you, and something small is going to happen. When God calls you, he is going to use you in powerful, significant ways. Hallelujah. When God calls possibilities that weren't present before will present themselves now. When God calls, doors that will shut, that were shut, will soon be opened. When God calls, he's about to take you from a low to a supernatural high. When God calls you, what had not been considered is about to happen. The scriptures are about to be flipped and things are about to change. But just like Samuel, we have to be able to discern and hear God's calling for us. And that's what's happening in our story today. It's a few hundred years. Now, I want to I put into perspective the age and the, and the era that Samuel is born into because it's significant to our story. So a few hundred years, it's been a few hundred years since God led, since God led Israel through the wilderness. And in the days of Moses and his, and his successor, Joshua, God led the people openly. Now, these people experienced God in very big ways. They've experienced God in the manna that they ate. They've experienced God in the cloud that guided them throughout the day. They've experienced God by fire, by the, by the pillar of fire that led them by night. And the earthquakes and lightning and smoke around Mount, around Mount Sinai, these people heard from God on a daily, on a regular basis. They were in tune. They were familiar with the voice of God leading them. But after they settled into the promised land and Joshua died, Israel entered into a new kind of wilderness. It was a moral and spiritual wasteland. The book of Judges describes it like this, that in those days, there was no king in Israel. Each person did what they thought to be right. Judges chapter 17, verse 6. It was a time of turmoil, full of violence and confusion. There was nobody to lead the people. Even the 12 tribes of Israel fought amongst themselves almost more than what they fought the neighboring enemies. Things were really ugly. When it would get really awful, God would raise up. Powerful spiritual, political, and military leaders called judges to lead them and to defend them. But they would often be generations apart, and that's the world that Samuel was brought into. It was a time when our story points out in verse 1 that the Lord's word was rare and visions were wide, weren't widely known. Isn't that amazing? That God's word was so rare. People were, very, were, were, were rarely receiving communication from him, visions from him. People didn't see or hear from God too much. And there were still many godly people there. In the boy Samuel's day, the revelation of the word of God was delivered by prophets and visions of godly people. And Samuel tells us that even in theocracy, the word of the Lord became rare. And I thought about that. It's ironic that with the great availability of today's Bibles in America, with the abundance of churches, megachurches, TV podcasts, Christian radio stations, public square events, that the word of the Lord is still indeed rare in the 21st century. Today, God has provided his written word universally throughout the whole world, and still his word is somewhat rare. Today, God has powerful people, apostles, prophets, men and women of God, but still today the word of God is somewhat rare. Now, why is that? One reason it's rare today is because God's word has been ruled illeg illegitimate and unwanted by those who write and adjudicate the laws of public safety. They want nothing to do with the word of God anymore. They're taking God out of your schools. They're taking God out of your workplace. They're taking God out of the restaurants. They're taking God out of everything. But still the word of God is available, but it's becoming rare. They're taking God out. However, in Samuel's day, the primary reason for the rarity of God's word in the public square is because it's simply not believed and put into practice. And we could take a lot and apply this to ourselves. Are we still practicing the word of God daily? Are we still practicing holiness daily? Are we still practicing on evangelizing daily? 
spreading the word of the gospel daily. But God spoke to young Samuel, the temple assistant Samuel, a little boy who was dropped off by his mother. And the boy listened, but he didn't know exactly who was speaking to him. He didn't know who was calling his name. He wasn't familiar with the voice. I was saying, Samuel, Samuel. He thought it was Eli. He wasn't aware. He wasn't in tune and in sync with the voice of God calling him. Now, this was not because Samuel was unwilling to listen or to respond, because he was. But because he had not been introduced to the voice of God. In 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 7, it says that Samuel did not yet know the Lord. Those words did not mean that Samuel did not know God who was, who, or who wasn't God. He wasn't confused because he knew that there was a God, but he just wasn't familiar with his voice. Now, back in the days of Samuel, there were a lot of interferences that was a contributing factor for not really knowing the voice of God. And even in today's day and age, there's a lot of interferences that's a contributing factor to the, to the lack of familiarity with the divine voice of God. Well, what, familiar, what, what, what interferences do we face? Number one is the busyness of lifestyles. We all have a busy lifestyle. Every single day we get up for work, we jet out the door, and we forget to spend time with God. Another one is sin. Sin also is an interference with the voice of God. We'll touch back into that later. Another one is spiritual immaturity. We're not spiritually mature, and yet we neglect and we don't know the voice of God. But the first point I want to point out here is that you could worship God. Now pay attention to this because it took me away. You could worship God and not know God. At least not know him intimately. And we can see that in 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 7. You could worship God but not know God. Isn't that something? The Bible says that Samuel was under the watchful eyes of Eli, and he didn't know the Lord yet. Samuel was worshiping in the sanctuary. We can see that in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verses 28, and he was ministering before God, 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 1. So he was worshiping, and he was also ministering. That is, he was assisting in his priestly duties. Every single day, he had duties. He had tasks. He knew how to bake the bread in the, in, in, in the tabernacle, that was his job. He knew how to open the doors to the people so they could come into the sanctuary and worship. That was his duty. He knew how to follow Eli around and get me this and get me that and go here and do this and, you know, give me this. He knew all that stuff. He knew how to, how to do everything in that temple. He was familiar with it. He was in the temple of God. He had all these tasks and obligations. But there's a big difference, church between the rituals of religion and having a true, authentic relationship with Christ. There's a big difference between worship and service to God and not know God. We can see that Eli failed in some way to show Samuel the act of true service and worship, which would enable Samuel to distinguish and authenticate the voice of God speaking to him. Amen? If you want to hear the voice of God speaking to you through your acts of service and worship, then you have to truly know what true service and worship is. Jesus laid it out that, the, that real true worship in John chapter 4, verses 22, and that is to worship God in spirit and also in truth. Romans says, present your bodies as a living sacrifice. When Paul said, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, he was talking about living a holy and godly life by following the Holy Spirit. The enemy doesn't want you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice because he understands the true power of a believer who is willing to set aside their flesh. He tries to keep you in the natural realms because once he has you kept in that natural realm, he has power and dominion over you. To truly present yourself as a living sacrifice to the Lord, you'll have to sacrifice a lot of things. Things that we have to sacrifice today, like what? Your emotions, your frustrations, your anger, your depression, your hardness of heart. You'll have to sacrifice your mindset of this world. Carnal thinking and expectations or assumptions to be truly living a carnal life. You've got to put all that stuff aside if you want to truly be in sync with the voice of God. Being transformed by the renewal of your mind daily, every single day. You can't hear or distinguish the voice of God if your mind isn't renewed every single day. 
Amen? If you're willing to be challenged in your worship, the Lord will speak a new thing into you and through you. If you're willing to be challenged by truly living a life of sanctification and holiness, then you will be able to distinguish the voice of the Father calling you and speaking to you daily. I love how pastor always says that God is always speaking to us. He's always speaking to us. He's always talking to us every single day. But why aren't we hearing him? Another point is that you could hear God speaking, but not recognize that it's God calling you. You could hear him speaking. Samuel heard God speaking, but he didn't recognize who that voice was. Imagine that. 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 7, where we learn something else. It says, Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not been yet revealed to him. Now that's interesting that Samuel did not yet know the Lord. He was raised in the temple. He grew up by all, all, the, all the statues and virtues there, all the rules and obligations. But the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. It says not yet, which indicates that he would eventually know the Lord, but that would come later when God would transform him, and it would transform him to be the last and greatest judge in Israel. This little boy sleeping beside the ark didn't know who was calling him. He didn't know the voice of God. Think about that. If you're going through the motions, like you're, you're, you're just in church, right? You're just Sunday morning, you're in church. And everybody's praising, everybody's worshiping, but you're just kind of like just standing around like this. You're singing the words, but you don't know what you're singing. Or when we pray, you're just praying with your eyes open like this, right? You're, sing, you're, you're praying, but you don't know what you're praying. Or when we read the word of God, we're reading the word of God, but your mind's somewhere else. So you know how to worship, you know how to praise, you know how to pray, you know how to read the word of God, but yet you're not really synced into it. That's kind of what, was, what Samuel was going through. Samuel was in the temple ministering and worshiping before the presence of the Lord, and he did not yet know his voice. He was sleeping right by the altar of God and still didn't know his voice. Samuel's story reminds us that for us to hear God, there are some things in us that need adjusting. There are some things in our hearts and our minds that need tuning. Earlier we said Samuel did not yet know the Lord. 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 7, speaking of intimate, personal relationship. First and foremost, our goal, church, including myself, this message is for me, me personally, our goal must be knowing God himself, personally and intimately, not just experiencing the supposed novelty of just hearing his voice. There's two big differences. Hearing his voice is not a gimmick of, spiritual, of, a, of a spiritual token to attain and put in your pocket and so you can just brag about it. Oh, I heard, the voice, I heard the voice of the Lord, here's my token. No. It begins with true, authentic, intimate relationship with your Savior, he died for you, so why can't you have an intimate relationship with him? He loved you so much that he died for you, so why can't you love him so much to put aside everything for him and hear his voice speaking to us every single day? Nothing is more important than learning to hear and obey God's voice. The Bible says in John chapter 10 that my sheep will hear my voice and, know that, and I will know them and they will follow me. That right there, church, is relationship. When you have a relationship with the Father, you will hear the voice of the shepherd. That's the difference. That is a true difference. To obey God's voice, you've got to hear his voice. And to hear his voice, you need to recognize his voice. And to recognize his voice, you must have a true relationship with God. Amen? We're called this morning to evaluate ourselves, our hearts, our condition, our spiritual conditions, and our relationship with God. Samuel, this is proof that Samuel was a young boy in the temple, and God spoke to him. That's no excuse for our children growing up in church every single Sunday and not knowing the voice of God. They know the voices of YouTube. They know the voices of, of, of social media. They know the voices of, of, of TikTok and Instagram. They know every voice, but they can't distinguish and tune in to the voice of God. That's an issue. That is a true issue in this, in this church. They know every other voice. 
put something on the phone and just put it here, 10 feet away, they'll know who's speaking. But when they come to the house of God, they can't distinguish and tune in to the voice of God. What's the issue with this? It's an issue. It's a problem. And I speak this for myself first. It's the relationship. Another thing, it is a relationship, not the voice that we need to seek. I'm going to say that again. It is a relationship, not the voice that we have to seek. David, a man after God's own heart, wrote, you have said, seek my face. My heart says to you, your face, Lord, do I seek. Developing a relationship with God comes before seeking to hear God's voice because relationship is based on trust. And trusting God is necessary or we won't be able to follow through with the things that God has called us to do. Hearing God's voice flows out of relationship. It is wed into our life of prayer before God, but you need an active relationship with the Father. Amen? Well, what does active relationship look like? Active relationship is not simply saying a one-time prayer at salvation and then expecting God to do all the things throughout your life. That is not active relationship. Relationship without active in it is just simply saying that you're related to somebody. It's not active, it's dead, it's stale, it's stagnated. There's no power in that. What person wants to be married to a spouse that just signs a marriage certificate and then lives in another house, they live another life, and nobody ever talks to them? And unfortunately, this is the circumstance of the current bride of Christ. We expect God, our husband, to go to work and provide for us, right? Right? He wants to provide every one of our needs for us. We expect God to give us knowledge of his presence for two hours a week and then speak to us on a daily basis. And then we drive to his house and we expect him to speak to us. The bride of Christ needs an active relationship with the groom. Otherwise, we won't go to heaven. We won't be the bride. God's original intent for humanity in the garden was active relationship. God had an active relationship with Adam. He spoke to him every single morning. That was active relationship. He had active relationship with Moses, with Noah. He had active relationship with his disciples who lived with him. He had active relationship. And when he had active relationship, he had active communication. And when there was active communication, there was active revelation. That's the difference. I call it active because relationship with God requires intentionality and action. God loves us, yeah, but you know what? We got to put in our work. We got to put in our due diligence, our service, our duty. We got to want to activate that relationship with Christ today. We come to church so many times throughout the week with a stale relationship. We come to church so many times without the the presence of the knowledge of God speaking to us. We come to church Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, and God is here in the temple. We're at the throne of God, and he's speaking to us. He's calling us out by name, but we're so mute to the voice of God. We're living in the days, church, where we cannot be mute anymore. we got to distinguish the right voice speaking to us. My fourth and final point. First Samuel chapter 3, verse 8 reads, The Lord called Samuel a third time. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. Again, it sounds exactly like the first two times, right? Samuel hears a voice, gets up and wakes poor Eli up who just wants to sleep all night. And he's wondering, what's going on with this boy? Why does he keep waking me up? (laughs) He's probably annoyed. All Eli wants to do is just get some sleep. God wasn't even speaking to him at the moment, so God had to use somebody else. But then all of a sudden, Eli gets it. He's like, wow. A light clicks in his head. A light bulb goes off. 
we read that Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, go and lay down, and if he calls you, speak, your servant is listening. So Samuel took his advice, and he went back, and he laid down in his place. Eli finally gets it. Eli is old. His years have been almost done. But he still was able to distinguish that, you know what, it's in fact God calling the boy, not me. He understands that there's something more that's trying to reach out to Samuel. He understands that God is trying to call him into the next room, but he needs to open his ears. He needs to mentor this boy. He needs to tell this boy what's really going on. He understands that there's a supernatural voice calling him, and the Bible says that God came up to him and stepped up to Samuel and called his name. So Eli gets what's going on, and he goes up and says, if you hear the Lord speaking, he instructs him what to do. I have a question for all of us, including myself. How good are we as parents? Are we good at equipping the next generation to hear God's voice? How good are we as parents, even adults, at mentoring our, our children to understand the voice of God? Mentoring our children to, 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 to speak back to the voice that's calling them. How good are we as parents, as grown up, as role models, to train our children up to hear the voice of God? There's so many voices in this world that's taking captive the thoughts of the young people, confusing them in this world, in this sick and twisted generation. You got voices of their, own, of their own mind, voices of the world, voices of the devil, voices of influence, voices of emotions, voices, voices of your heart. There are so many emotional voices that are just taking them captive and they're robbing them of the voice of God. We need people to raise up and train our children and teach them the true voice of God. This is why I love this church. This is why I love the pastor of this church, the pastors of this church. Young children, if you need help tuning into the voice of God, if you need help seeking the voice of God, come to one of these great leaders here in this church. Samuel ran to Eli and said, I need help distinguishing the voice of God. Us as people in this church, we have godly men here, even women here. Go to them. They can show you and teach you and guide you, and, and they can grow you up knowing the voice of God. Amen? And I love this last part. With this, I'm going to close. It says that Samuel went down and laid down in his place. This is very important. Samuel went back and laid down in his place. He had his own place where God came to. There was his own place that God specifically dwelled into. There was a place that he could recognize the voice of God. You will recognize God's voice when you get in your secret place. You will recognize God's voice when you stay in your secret place. There is a place in your prayer closet in your house. When you go there, God will speak to you. There is a place that we need to commit to the Lord every single day. Do we want to hear the voice of God speaking to us? Do we want to hear the voice of God leading us and guiding us and instructing us every single day, picking us up, leading us? I need more of the voice of God. I want to, I want to experience the voice of God in a different way, in a different level, in a different realm. I'm sick and tired of being 35 years old and I'm still mute to the voice of God. I want God to open our ears, my ears. He's speaking to us every single day. Even this morning, he was speaking to us. But we can't hear him. That's a problem. So I pray that God opens our ears, that he shows us through the word of God his true wisdom, his intellect, his knowledge. That God opens up all of our ears. Amen? Amen. May God bless you all. Amen.